This evening, it is good to be in church on a Thursday night. Amen? Amen. How do you love Jesus tonight? Amen. Amen. Our God is a good God. Remember the activities over the weekend. Come praying, come believing, see what God has in store for us. Outreach on Saturday. Amen? Amen. Outreach on Saturday at 430. We need all the, all the help that we can get. Amen? Amen. So, well, Pastor, I don't know how to do outreach. Well, you're never going to learn unless you come and try. Amen? Saturday, 4.30, I want you to come help us out. Let's tell someone about Jesus, just like someone told you, all right? Amen. And then pray for those that are out and about doing various different things in the field. I talked to someone last night, and he had all of his gear. I said, coming out of the field? Yep, going back tomorrow, all right? So field work is going on, but so pray for them, amen? amen. Pray that you can be thankful that you're not there. Yeah. Yes, sir. How does that sound, amen? amen? All right, church, on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, come pray and come believe and see what God has for us, amen? Amen. At this time, Brother Frankie is going to come to help us to receive the Thursday evening tithe and offering. All Christians pay tithe. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Tithe is a tenth of our gross income as commanded by the word of the Lord, right? I pay tithe. If someone gives me $10, I owe a dollar tithe. Amen. Yes, I have a, no problem. No problem. Somebody wants to give me $10, I have no problem giving a dollar to God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Someone gives me $20, I don't have a problem giving God $2. If somebody wants to give me a hundred dollars, right. well, might as well aim high, right? right? I don't have a problem giving God ten dollars. Right. Well, what, Pastor? Pastor, what if someone gives you five hundred dollars? First of all, I'm going to say thank you to them. I'm going to say thank you, Jesus, and pay my tithe of how much? Fifty dollars. Now, that's a pretty good, pretty good trade-off, is it not? Yes, well, what would you do if someone gave you five? thousand dollars amen i would have no problem amen so that's the way that it works and you know it's really a great deal thank god that he doesn't ask us for 90 percent <laughs> amen and the thing about it is well i can't afford to pay my tithe pastor you can't afford not to god will take care of you all right because he said he said prove me but the problem is people don't do it long enough to prove god all right, so praise the Lord. How many love Jesus? Amen. We can give online. It makes it very easy to give online at myntcc.org slash junctioncityks. We have a give online giving button there. Or it's easy for most folks around here to do cash app, dollar sign, NTCC Junction City. And so very easy to give. Or just a good old-fashioned way, just put some good old-fashioned cash in the bag. Amen? Amen. That works as well. Yes. Right? There's no fees that way. But so praise the Lord anyhow. But we made it easy for you to give online, so let's receive a good offering because there are bills. Amen? Unfortunately, I cannot... How many enjoy this air conditioning in here right now, right? It's hot outside. Unfortunately, I cannot call Evergy and say, Oh, um, be ye warmed and filled. This is for a church, and so the energy is free this month. They will say no problem, and they will turn it off. Right? Really, without hesitation. All right, so we go to the home, the air conditioning or the heat, whatever the case may be, is on over there, and it's pleasant, it's nice, and someone has to pay for these buildings and, the, and all the various the maintenance that goes along with it. That's where the tithe and the offerings go to. Amen? Amen. For our church. Amen? Yes, so you give us unto the Lord, and God will bless you as you give unto him. Amen? Amen. Brother Frank, you here. Please pray. Ask God to bless the gift and the giver. Father, we thank you tonight for allowing us to be here in your presence. Worship you to give to you, Lord. Bless you, bless each person in your house tonight. Every day, every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. giving and my prayer is that God will bless you abundantly. Amen? Amen. So thank you for your faithful 
Thanksgiving as unto the Lord. Also, also we'd like to say real quick, congratulations to, to Brother Ryan. He got promoted. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I pastored a church one time in Washington State, and I always I just carried on the tradition of the former pastor. And the rule was that when you got promoted, that you have to buy pizza for everybody. Should we carry on that tradition as well? No, just not the chicken wings. Don't get carried away. <laughs> that sounds like a good deal, right? As long as you didn't order the kind you ordered the other night, it should be good to go. If you got a pepperoni pizza with no sauce on it, but they just put buffalo hot sauce on it with pepperoni, and he asked me if I wanted some, the last piece, it looked like something that got run over out there. on my tasted like it too. So praise the Lord. We're not going to do that tradition, all right? So you're off the hook. All right? How does that sound? My wife's a bummer. Well, maybe for the pastor and his wife. I don't want your pizza. Man, that took too long to say yes. Man, if my pastor was here, I'd be more than happy to buy him some pizza right now if he wanted to. Yes, right, yes, sir. That, uh, that's a fact. Yes, sir. And anybody who knows me well enough knows. I saw my pastor one time, this is Pastor Davis, years ago, and he was at that Texaco station on Meridian and um, 200th Street, right there on the corner there. And he had pulled in to get gas. I turned around and pulled in. I said, sir, I got it for you. I'll pump your gas for you. I stopped what I was doing. Gas is expensive. God blesses people. Amen. 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 You have to look beyond certain things and let God bless you. Because our God is a miracle-working God. Amen? Amen. Let's read the Bible tonight. How does that sound? Man, I'm already in a battle, Pastor. Let me tell you another story, real quick. I got the pulpit, so I guess I can do what I want to, I suppose, right? right? So, I was pastoring a church in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, right around 1992. And this fellow had come to church, and, and in the, it was a midweek service, and in the preaching, I, I began to share how I used to wash my pastor's car. And uh, just in, how, I don't know how the message I was sharing, but Saturday morning, about 7, 8 o'clock, I was still in bed. He knocked on the door, the service was home. And I came to the door, I said, yes. He'd been to one church service. I said, what are you doing? He said, and he had stuff, bucket and stuff in his hand. He said, well, he said, I figured that if you can wash your pastor's car, I can wash my pastor's car. Amen. Amen. I said, what? Well, if you can wash your pastor's car, I can wash my pastor's car. I said, it's right there. Amen. He said, okay. I went back in the room. And he washed the car for me. Then he moved into service was home. And uh, lived there. He had a two-year enlistment. Lived there the whole time. Amen. Amen. And so, praise. He, I don't think he ever moved in the barracks. At that time, he was still in reception, and uh, he didn't even move into his room. He just moved into the service room. Amen. So praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you just saying that? So, so I'll wash your car. I'm just giving you an example that if you take care of leadership, God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. So you don't like this already? I didn't start preaching. Now people want to do it. They want to charge you. But anyway, that's a whole other issue. Psalm 100. How many still love Jesus? Yes. You know, Pastor, you have just sat in my victory. Maybe we should have altar call. <laughs> Psalm 100, verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Amen. Serve the Lord with what gladness? Come before his presence with singing. Know ye of the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Hallelujah. Look at verse 4. Enter into its gates with sadness, and into its courts with madness, and be unthankful unto him. 
and curse his name. Oh, wrong version, right? Enter into his courts with what? Thanksgiving. And into his courts with? Praise. Be what? Thankful unto him and bless his name. I want to preach tonight for just a little while on the title of a message, Accessing God with Praise and Thanksgiving. Yes, amen. Accessing God with Praise and Thanksgiving. Reverend Palmer, sir, please pray. Father, we thank you tonight for this wonderful service. You have blessed us with, Lord. We ask you now to continue to move and bless your people, Lord. Help Pastor now to minister of us tonight. Help make preaching easy for him this evening. We give you all the glory and the praise in Christ's name. Amen. You know, we read different verses of Scripture. And it seems as though that we are to come to God with thanksgiving and praise. And when we do this, we have access into His presence. How many want to be in the presence of Almighty God? Amen. I understand that sometimes that we come to God with needs that are so great and circumstances so bleak, it's hard to find a spirit of praise within us. What am I saying? Sometimes when life is hard, amen? amen? Come on now, when our emotions are going every which way and, and things are happening in our life, it's kind of hard to say praise the Lord and mean it. Yes, so many times we allow ourselves to be so laden down and so burdened down with the cares of this life that our praise seems nowhere to be found. Because of life. But as we look at Psalm 100, verse 5, we find that it addresses that problem. He said, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endured to all generations. I, I really like this because the psalmist gives us three things to praise God for. Praises that never change. I'm glad, number one, we can praise God because he is good. Oh, hallelujah. We serve a good God tonight. His love, number two, endures forever. You know what? You may turn your back on God, but God will never stop loving you. Even though you may wake up in hell someday, God still loves you. I'm glad tonight that his love endures forever. And that number three, his faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Our God is a faithful God. Praise needs to be a part of our life before God. I believe that we ought to praise God not just at church, not just during song service, not just when things are going good, but I believe that praise needs to be an integral part of our life. Praise God in the barracks. Praise God in the noontime. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noontime. Sometimes some folks only praise God when they're here. But I believe that praise to God needs to be more than just here in his sanctuary. Yeah. And then it's sad to say that some people don't even praise God when they're in a sanctuary. Right. But I'm glad that we can praise God everywhere that we go. Can everybody say a great big round rope us? Praise the Lord. If we omit praise, if we leave praise out, just like the nine lepers of Luke chapter 17, verses 12 through 18. Listen. And as he entered into a certain village, talking about Jesus, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud, I like this, with a loud voice. Do you hear what it says? With a what? Loud voice. Glorified God. I'm so glad that we can lift our voice unto the Lord. I, I, I just want to worship God quietly. I, I'm praising him in my heart. Well, that's all well and good when it's in your heart. It's going to come out like an explosion. Amen? He said that his, with a loud voice, glorify God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? 
There are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. The other nine left. They got what they needed. But this one realized, wait a minute. I've been touched. I've been cleansed. I need to give glory to God. And he came back in church. I realized that we have been touched. We have been cleansed. And now we want to give God praise and glory. Jesus in his love and mercy heard the cry. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Amen. And Jesus met their needs, but only one of them returned to thank him. Yes. The language that is used in the Greek indicates that all ten were physically healed, but only the one who returned to thank Jesus was also spiritually healed. Yes. Praise God. We have been spiritually healed when we were born again. Hallelujah. When we call upon Jesus and say, God, I need to be forgiven. I need the blood of Jesus in my life. I'm glad not only were we physically healed, but God touched my mind. He touched my heart. And he made me spiritually whole. We call unto the Lord for salvation. And oh, praise God, he saved us. Is that not time for rejoicing? Amen. The Bible said, Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I like that. Call, call. We need to call upon the Lord. I'm just going to sit back, wait for God to do something. No, why don't you call upon him? How many are glad that he heard your cry when you called upon him? He washed away my sins oh hallelujah the song said are you washed are you washed are you washed tonight i'm glad that god is still able to wash away our sins i'm glad that god is still able to make us whole i'm so glad that god delivered us from sin and condemnation hallelujah but how many of us are like the nine lepers that did not return to thank him and to praise him. You know, I believe that we need to be careful to give him all the proper praise and glory that so rightfully belongs unto him. Amen. Now, if you made it here tonight to church safely, you need to praise God. Yes, if you live this day safely, you need to praise God. Amen. Seriously, there are a lot of people that don't, will not make it through this night. Right. We need to praise God where we can. Amen? Amen? How many would agree that we need to praise the Lord? Well, it's time to start doing this. Amen? Amen? Understand and realize that church is not just a spectator event. That's right. Mm, people want to sit. Especially on Sunday mornings. Like they're coming for a performance. We're not here to perform. We're here to preach. Amen? Amen? And church is not just a spectator event. I believe that we have to pay attention, that we have to listen. But at the same time, I, I think it's, start, it's time to start being a praise participator. Yes, right. Amen? Amen? Well, I'll just let Sister Naomi and, and the preachers and, my, and Sister Gandy say amen. I believe that all of us can praise the Lord. Yes. It's time to be a praise participator. Yes. How many want to be a praise participator? Yes. I just don't feel like it. Sometimes you don't feel like it physically, but you just need to do it anyhow. Amen? And before long, Something begins to move on the inside, and you can't help but to give God praise and glory and honor. Listen to Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. How many would say that God has done a mighty act in your life? Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. I like this. How many are breathing tonight? Amen. He said, let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. I've got breath, whether it be good or bad. I'm going to praise God. Amen. Praise is not only the gateway into the presence of God. It is also the means by which we release the supernatural power of God in the situations that we need. 
I, I, you know, there are times in our life that we need a move of God in our lives. I don't want just, you know, any, any just mediocre thing. I need a supernatural move of God in my life. But I want you to know tonight, our God is a supernatural God. Think about this. When Jesus, when feeding the 5,000, Jesus did not pray for the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes. He didn't pray for that. He merely gave thanks. John chapter 6 verse 11. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. He didn't say, God, oh, Father, there's just a little bit of bread and there's just a little bit of fish. Could you kind of like kind of stretch it out, please? That's not what he did. The Bible said he gave thanks. He gave thanks. This is an attitude of praise and acknowledgement that God is still a supernatural working God. God, I thank you. Oh, hallelujah. We got to come to the place where we give thanks unto God. This is awesome. What happened? This thanks released the divine power that turned the loaves and the fishes into an abundant meal for 5,000 men, women, and children. Our God is a supernatural God. When you and I, when we acknowledge that God is still a miracle-working God and we praise him in the right way, we have a gateway into his presence. It's not like God give me this and God give me that, God do this and God do that, but no God, I wanna thank you for your goodness. God, I wanna thank you for your mighty work. God, I wanna thank you for your power. And I want you to know with that, we have an access into the throne room of Almighty God. Stop living in want and need and all beat down. Living in want, need, and all beat down because you're not giving God the right kind of praise. If you're looking at the circumstances around you rather than the supernatural God that lives above us, amen, and lives in us. Hmm. I don't want to be a downer, so I'll keep going. I was just thinking that people always look at all these other things around about us. You know what? God's able to meet the needs. Amen. But we have to thank him, but we're too busy looking at all the circumstances. Right. We're too busy looking at the economic status of America. Right. If you look at that stuff, you can get depressed really fast. Oh, yeah. You go out there look at the gas tank, the gas pumps, you get dis discouraged. Yeah. But God, thank you that you have given me the ability to put gas in my car. Oh, man, it may hurt a little bit, but, and you're thinking, I don't know how this is going to work out, but God, I'm going to trust in you. God, I'm going to believe you. God, I thank you. Amen. You gave me the ability to pump this gas. Amen. You gave me the ability to pay for this gas. Yes, God, I thank you, and you know what? I believe that God can help us. Amen. Not only that, I believe that we need God to help us. Yes. Hmm. Don't be all beat down walking around in need. Hebrews 12 and 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. You know what? It's time to lift our hands. The Bible said, I will that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Why do we lift up our hands? Because the Bible says that we can. Can I get a great big amen on that? Well, you're a fanatic. No, I'm not a fanatic. I just love the Lord. And the Bible said, I can lift up my hands. I can pray. I'm going to offer supplication unto my God. I'm going to offer thanksgiving unto my God. I'm going to praise my God. And I know, wait a minute, if I do this, everything's going to be all right. Tonight is the night to rise up and praise and be renewed by the Spirit of God. No, you don't get it. Don't give me that trash. I mean, they don't understand how things are. You just don't understand the God that we serve. And if you come to that place and trust and believe God, I'm telling you, God will bless you. Amen. Praise grants us access to God. What about when Jesus stood before the grave of Lazarus? He didn't pray for Lazarus to come forth. 
He merely gave thanks, but the Father always heard him. John chapter 11, verse 41. Then they took away the stone from that place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. We know what happened, don't we? Lazarus came forth. Hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Here's the point. When Jesus prayed and he gave thanks, it released the power that was needed to bring Lazarus out of the tomb. Praise be unto God that God delivered us up out of that tomb. There is power in praising and thanking the Lord. You got to try it sometime. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18. He says, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Amen. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. You know what? Giving thanks is the will of God in all situations. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, preacher, something bad happened. Well, you know, it rains on the just and the unjust, doesn't it? Yes, a lot of times we don't understand certain things. But you know what? Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. But, but that's bad. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. God has everything in control. Amen. This has a direct bearing upon the effectiveness of our prayers. When we are giving thanks and we are praising him and acknowledging him as the source of the blessing. God is the source of our blessings. He said every good gift cometh down from the Father of lights. And you know what? God doesn't send sickness. God doesn't send disease. God doesn't send all these things. But you know what? When they come our way, we can just thank God and God, I'm going to praise you anyhow. God, I'm going to pray to you anyhow. God, I'm going to acknowledge you anyhow. And I know, I know, I know it's going to work out because you are the source of our blessing and it makes a difference on the way that we pray. Amen. Bible said Psalm 92 verse 1 It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord to sing praises unto thy name O Most High. Amen. Amen. Talking about singing. Come Saturday afternoon. Okay, we're going to work you in there. All right. Well, I'm thinking about that. Amen? Amen? You said you want to try? We're going to give you a shot, man. All right. All right. Praise God. Amen? Amen? We can get your box to stand on so people can see you. <laughs> oh, right. Psalm 106. Let me just say real quick, I appreciate Connor. Amen. You know what? One thing I really appreciate about Connor, he's down about anything. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll, I don't try anything with a smile on his face. I like that. He's not like Let's do this. He doesn't do that. He'll be like, okay. <laughs> I love that attitude. Amen. It's not like, I can't stand that kind of attitude. I like that attitude. Kind of keep it up. Amen. All right. Praise God. Psalm 106 verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Yes. Psalm 106, verse 47. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the brethren to give thanks unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. Oh, hallelujah, we don't have to be defeated. We can triumph in the praise of Almighty God. Yes. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God when we feel like it. No, oh. Offer the sacrifices of praise to God only on Sunday morning. No. What? Offer the sacrifice of God continually man hallelujah that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name 
I want you to understand the direct correlation between thanks and praise. This is how that we are to enter into our worship services and our devotions with God. You come in here, it's Thursday night. I know you're tired. I know it's a hard week, but we still need to praise God. We need to come in here Sunday morning all dreary and sleepy. We need to come in here ready to praise God and to magnify his mighty name and let the praises of God come out of our lips and out of our hearts because our God is worthy of praise. When we enter into church and we answer the call to worship, we need to do it with a heart full of thanksgiving. When we say it's time to pray, let's begin service, it's a call to worship. Just like in the military, you have the different bugle sounds. A call to this, a call to that. It means something, does it not? Reveille and chow and flag, they have all these these, all these trumpet calls. And even when you're out there on the parade deck, parade field, sorry, wrong branch of service. Parade field, sound adjutant's call. Right, and there goes that guy out there in the middle. How many know what I'm talking about? Y'all even do that anymore? Wow, yeah, do you even go to the parade field? Not for the trumpet, no. Yeah. Well, Jesus. God, what has happened right. to our military? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Anyhow, look up your military history. Ron is not here for me to get a witness. Ron is up in Montana for the family reunion. Pray for them. Amen. Amen. All right, praise God. So it's a call to worship. All right, let's forget about the stupid bugles for a little while. But when we come in the house of God, whether it be me or the other preachers here, let's stand and open up a service. Let's give God prayer. It is a call to worship. It's time to forget about what's going on. Uh, the things outside these four walls uh, and begin to direct our hearts and our attention and our mind to God and to praise God whether you had a good day or a bad day. Let's just begin to praise him and all the cares and all the worries begin to fall off as we begin to look unto Jesus. Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, it is a call to worship. Amen. Psalm 69, verse 30. I will praise the name of God with song and will magnify him with what? Thanksgiving. Amen. Psalm 95, verse 2. Let us come before his presence with what? Thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. Well, I can't sing. Make a joyful noise anyhow. In Psalm 107, verse 21 and 22. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. It is good. It is good to rejoice. Amen. Amen. And listen, as we do this, we will release the power of God to move in a mighty way in our services. We want God to move in our services. Amen. Well, preacher, I think you're too crazy. Nobody likes this. You know what? People like it. Amen. People want it. If you're just dead and dry, but you're like every other place. Amen. We don't need to be dead and dry. It's time to become alive. It's time to praise the Lord. Say, preacher, it won't work. It's worked before. God has not changed. He, come on now, Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. How many are going to praise the Lord with me? We may be offering to God a petition that is right in every aspect. But if we do not accompany it with thanksgiving, I don't believe that we're in the will of God. We may have a need. We go to court God with the need. All right, but why don't you put some thanksgiving in with it? Many times I'll pray, God, thank you. Even before Thursday service, God, bless the Thursday night service. God, speak to people's heart. And then I'll turn around and say, God, thank you for touching their hearts. God, thank you for moving in a mighty way. But it hasn't even happened yet. I know. But I have a petition, but I'm going to accompany it with thanksgiving. And that's what we need to do is the attitude of faith and belief in God. Amen? Amen. Our failure to give thanks nullifies the rightness of our petition. Paul also indicates that it would have the effect of quenching the spirit. We don't want to quench the spirit, do we? 
We want the Spirit to move in a mighty way. I understand that we have issues. I understand that we have problems. I understand that we face certain things. But I want each of you to grasp the importance of accessing God with praise and thanksgiving. It's time to stop complaining about everything going around about you and just start praising God and thanking God. And before long, you don't have time to complain about what's happening. Amen. And so by doing this, you shift your attention off of you and offer your problems, and you release the power of God in your life. Amen. And church, that's what we want. I want the power of God released into our lives, amen? I want it released in my life, and I want it released in your life, and I want it released in this church. And you know what, the power of God, who can stop us, amen? amen. Who can stop us, praise the Lord. Stop focusing upon your liabilities and your problems and let us focus on giving Jesus all the glory and all the honor that belongs to him. We need to praise the Lord. Come to the piano or drums or whatever you're doing. Amen? And why don't we just stand right now? We're going to praise God. I want you to stand. Don't go in slow motion. Go! And I want you to put those old lightning rods in the air. They're getting ready to sing. I want you to praise God. I want you to... Come on. It's easy. Left hand up. Right hand up. Come on. Don't be rebellious. And begin to praise God. Begin to magnify Him. And as we do this, the altars are open. Come 